All right, guys. Yesterday we practiced our techniques using that crayon um, crown technique that did not work as well as I had hoped it would in class. Um, so I am sacrificing some of my. I'm hoping I will still have enough. I should have enough for our project too. So um, I went ahead and cut some scratch boards in half. This one's been scuffed up a little, which is perfect for practice. You know, we, we want to keep a really pretty ones for our projects. So I have cut down some of our scratch boards, and I'm going to show you how to start a scratch board image. Now, um, this is one of those few assignments or projects where you actually get to kind of trace your image. Being that we don't want to really use pencil on scratch board because you can't erase it. If, even if you do erase it, it will leave like a mark behind on the scratch board. It'll kind of damage the surface and then that pretty black will be rough, roughed up and, and you'll still be able to see your lines because of the eraser mark that it leaves behind. So this is one of the few things where you actually get permission to trace your image. Um, so what I did was I have my printout here. This is the image I'm going to be transferring and scratching. So I have I, I took a single piece of scotch tape and I taped it to the front and I wrapped it to the back side of my scratch board so that it kind of opens like a folder sort of, you know. Um, not only does that protect my scratch board from getting accidentally scratched when I'm not using it, um, but it gives me a way to keep my image in one place while I'm transferring it. So what I am going to do is um, you could use a pencil for this or a ballpoint pen. I feel like a ballpoint pen works just a little bit better. Um, I don't know. That's just kind of my personal preference. Plus, when you do it in a, like a, if you use like a red or something, but you could also use a color pencil or whatever, you can kind of see your lines, I think, a little bit better so you know where you've been. So the goal on this stage is to transfer as much detail as you can. It'll make your life a little bit easier when you start shading it. So um, I'm going to push down really heavy as I trace. And that is going to help leave an imprint on my scratch board. Okay. Um, we want to see that imprint because that's, well, that's our lines, all right? Since we're not drawing on our scratch board, we're gonna use that indention to give us our guide. So I will see, and I, I check occasionally. I don't know if you can see, it is transferring. There, you can kind of see, I turned my light on. Um, you can kind of see where it's indenting on my scratch board, and you'll be able to see it a lot better in person. But you're just going to kind of continue to push hard and transfer your whole image. Now, I would also take advantage of putting in some other little bits of information while you have your um, image attached to your paper. So say I've got this really heavy cast shadow here, so I'm going to also make sure I trace that. Now, when you start scratching, um, just because we are tracing all of these lines right now, that does not mean when you start scratching you're going to want to outline all these lines. You, you absolutely do not want to do that um, unless it calls for a really hard line in the shadow or shape. Because um, if we outline all of our lines, when we have our shadow, say we, say we outline a really harsh line right here along this hard, dark shadow, it's going to leave a really bright line right there. And that's completely the opposite of what we want because it's supposed to get darker there. So this, these, when I put in information like this, this is just a guide, a reminder as to where my shadow should be, not necessarily where I'm going to scratch. Okay, so um, I'm going to just get in a little bit more information which I'm trying to get it all traced so I could just remove my paper and look at it side by side, which shouldn't take me much longer. Um, but you'll have the choice of, for the practice, you'll have the choice of this flower if you want. But then I also have just printed off some, some a set of pear apples that you can practice with as well. Um, 
The apples, however, have already kind of, they were a scratch art example, specifically already done in scratch art. So um, your project will not, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to pull off someone else's scratch art piece to do. You're going to have to find a photo of your own. Like, so I'm, I use the actual photo of a flower here, and then I'm going to just render it in scratch art versus doing an actual scratch art piece. So that's why I chose this as my example. So when you, I, I should have my whole flower, um, let's see if you can kind of see it. I should, I do have my whole flower impressed, I believe. And I'm going to double check before I remove it to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I, th I think I got it all though. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my paper. I'll probably tape it back when I'm done. Or I suppose what you could do is just get you another copy to look at. That's probably what I'll do just so that I can keep this on and protect it. So looking, I've got my other copy over here, but I, yeah, I can't fit it into the screen. Um, so looking at my where my highlights and shadows are of my picture, okay, those those are the areas I want to scratch. Okay, there's actually a really bright kind of highlight on the edge of these outer petals, so I might want to start there. I would always kind of start where it is lighter at versus darker because you can you want to ease into that dark, and um, normally. I probably wouldn't want to outline, but it, it's really clear. There's a really strong highlight, a strong edge. So just when I, where I see those parts, am I going to kind of outline? Now I'm using a scratcher, a, a, a metal stylus this, um, this time versus a pencil stylus like we did, and this will this will scrape away that black surface really easily. Okay, so I'm going to start where I just see those really bright highlights. I do not want to just willy-nilly outline everything, okay? And I guarantee you, those of you that are watching this but not listening to this, you're going to make that mistake. Um, okay, so again, I'm just kind of putting in my, just where I see my really bright highlights at. I see it kind of here. So I'm, I would probably do all that first. But I don't want to do that for this whole video. So I want to go ahead and go into shading with it, okay? Um, so again, I'm going to start more where I have more of a highlight because it's easier to scratch more where I need to versus, you know, you can't unscratch. So I'm going to start where it's lighter. And I'm going to be using the cross contour technique. If you take a look at this petal, um, you could really see kind of the texture in the petal. And I feel like the, the, the technique, the cross contour, would kind of want to flow in that way versus, say, going this way. Now, you could make that work, but I feel like with a flower, you're going to wind up making it look more like a spiral versus petals. So I'm going to make my lines kind of curve and flow with the petal in that direction. And that will probably give me a better... Um, effect for a flower. So anyways, I'm going to just very, very lightly start scraping. Now, this is also about pressure too. The heavier you press, the more it's going to scratch. So you want to sort of start with really light pressure. And I'm going to watch the direction that my petals curve. So it's going to Kind of, sort of like, if you, if you remember when we did um, ellipse last year, they're, they're going to kind of sort of change directions in there. Okay, so I kind of did that just to give me a, an idea of how I wanted my strokes to flow. And then I, it's going to, I'm going to take it pretty much, like, let me pull that shadow over a little bit better. I'm going to take it almost all the way to this petal, but I don't want to take it all the way because there's a black shadow there, okay? That's why I'm kind of easing into it. And then I can get, now, um, 
scratch art, you, again, you can't erase. So you have to just sort of take your time. It's, you're going to feel intimidated probably at first because you can't erase. But um, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. And then it's just also one of those things, if you make a boo-boo, um, you just have to try to problem solve a way on how you can camouflage it or make it look like it was done on purpose. That's kind of the one thing I really like about art in general is that you get to problem solve. Um, so you can kind of tell that I have more of a highlight over here because I've scratched more. But you could also see, uh, this is something you need to also learn how to kind of camouflage when you're doing scratch art. I have this edge here, but I still don't want it to look just like this line. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to um, camouflage that line, even though it is a definite edge there. We want it to look more like just a really hard highlight versus an outline and then some shading, if that makes sense. So I'm... I went back and I kind of did shorter strokes to get that to fade. And this is, this is again, this is going to be kind of a layering effect. Um, so I'm going to kind of pause on that pedal. I'll probably come back and work it a little bit more. But I'm going to work probably some other highlights because I can, I can always scratch more. I can't scratch less. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing over here. Kind of let my, if my, if my pedal kind of wobbles in an area. I might try to follow that little wobbliness because that's going to help give that cross contour, just like I did showed you on my fish, which I'm going to, where is my fish? I showed you on my fish example, um, that cross contour, you know, when your lines flow with your shape, it gives it a little bit more form. So I strongly encourage you to do cross contour technique with your scratch art, but um, you can get really good scratch art pieces with just when you use just all cross hatching or um, stippling. I mean, all the techniques are really useful. If you want more of the form, though, I would probably try the cross contour. Okay. So, anyways, we are going to work on this for the next couple of days just to kind of get the hang of it. And then you will get to pick a project of your own to do, um, and I imagine they'll probably just be finding a high contrast photo um, to do, and uh, I would, I might also suggest a family crest that, I've done family crest projects in the past, um, I did not get to do one last year because we went in quarantine, but it's usually really neat because you get to do a little research on your family, um, so I might pull up some examples when we get to the project just to give that as an option. Um, anyways, work on that. Again, you can you can slowly work into your shadows. You don't want to get there too fast, too hard, because then you can't undo it. So work in those highlights, fade into your shadows. So, um, all right, that's what we're doing, and let me know if you have any questions.